Hey, how's it? Aloha, I'm Naoki. Welcome to my studio. Today, we're gonna try to print this mahi mahi. I've been wanting to show show you folks uh, how I go about making gyotaku naoki style. So we have a beautiful fish to share with you here. Let's go. Here's a mahi mahi. Right now, I'm uh, putting this uh, watered down black acrylic acrylic color but it's water based it's important because we're gonna eat this fish right after we print and uh, we don't want to put anything toxic to it so acrylic is a uh, key because the pigments really stable it's not gonna react with UV rays and also oxidation it's it's really good for long-term preservation acrylic paint is my is my choice I'm just uh, painting the whole uh, fish with with brush something like this it's nothing special you don't need a specialized equipment and the paint is water-based acrylic as I said after applying the paint it'll be just blob of paint so what I discovered over the years was to dab it off so my choice of tool is a rolled up uh, t-shirt it has to be soft so I prefer used t-shirts washed over and over so it works well that way I dab it through uh, to take the brush strokes and the uh, excess amount of paint off. Uh, as you saw right there, I uh, use my finger and the cloth over to wipe the eye. That, that would create a spot where I can paint the uh, eyeball in after. Uh, that's kind of a critical step. But then I'm always cautious to keep the paint on the eye socket because that gives you the location where I should go. And here's a paper. Paper goes over. It's a shoji paper, a uh, special type of rice paper. It's again, uh, modern science, I guess, uh, uh, provides with better materials than 200 years ago. So it, it withstands the environment, uh, such as moisture um, against mildew. It's got a lot of synthetic materials mixed in it. So, so it preserves well. And then actually, uh, when people started doing Gyotaku 200 years ago, technology wasn't so advanced, so everything was so organic. And as you know, organic materials doesn't last as long as synthetic. Like Twinkies wouldn't last 20 years if that was organic, right? It's, it's always good to think in terms of preservation because not just next year or 10 years from now, we want um, our kids, grandchildren to look at this. So 50 year, 100 year preservation would be, would be a nice, nice goal. When you lift the paper, you're gonna have the reverse image of, of the subject you have on workbench. And again, by dabbing the uh, ink off, you're gonna get the consistency that we're looking for. And also the um, uh, texture and the detail. And here's a paint. Okay, uh, again, it's acrylic, same type of paint, but this one's very much diluted uh, because we're gonna use water. Water is a vehicle. We have to we have to use water, but too much is no good because then it's gonna take take your control away. Okay, water is a very powerful element. So if you if you learn how to tame it and then to uh, to use it as a tool, it's very useful. But then if you just let it go as as naturally without control, uh, it's gonna take over. It, it'll. Uh, create or destroy water does everything uh, I'm rubbing rubbing it onto the paper but then before that what I did was I sprayed a mist of water clear water and some um, uh, localized areas like fins and stuff um, because with the spray I don't have control I use brush to actually moist moisten the paper before I before I apply paint so that gives the feathering effect that I'm looking for. It's not gonna give that solid line of like a, a paint over dry paper. So it's a feathering effect. I guess uh, airbrush artists would, would uh, use the spray and in mist mode and then to feather. So um, this is more like watercolor kind of technique. So you use water and then to prepare the medium before you 
add pigments to to add color to shift colors obviously I start with lighter colors and then go darker obviously I feel naturally I, I have more control over my uh, layers and layers of coloring so this is very much diluted yellow uh, I see in Mahi Mahi with gold uh, pigments uh, as as uh, people call this fish Dorado in mainland, uh, actually it's from South America name, but uh, it's golden. So it's got a lot of gold shimmers to it. So uh, predominantly yellow, but then uh, gold, gold pigments I, I add to yellow to bring out uh, more lifelike color. Again, based on my opinion. So we all see things differently. We all feel different. Uh, nature provides us, provides us with a full spectrum of color but then uh, uh, we can translate it all differently. And depending on weather, depending on the clarity of water, well, fish itself, it has uh, uh, ability to change color like chameleon. So um, a lot of times fish, when they relax or when they're excited, feeding, uh, getting chased, they have expressions uh, with color, color expressions rather than facial expressions. So it's really interesting to observe the nature and more attention you pay, I guess, uh, more you learn because all the information's out there. So it's all up to you. Uh, how much attention you pay um, it will provide us with uh, answers, I guess, we're, we're uh, looking for. So I go in the water and I swim with the fish. Uh, I see them. And uh, I remember how they look, right? So after you see, you know, hundreds, thousands of fish, then uh, um, when you close your eyes, you start seeing them. And, you have to know the subject, not not just knowing how they look, but how they behave, how they share space, how they chase bait, how they communicate, how how the life takes place underwater. I think uh, uh, all those uh, uh, things combined uh, uh, will tell the story better than just looking at stagnant dead fish on your wall. Yeah, we want to show life rather than just a dead dead trophy on your wall. Imagine how, how this type of fish live in the nature, in the wild, and then how, they, how they feed and how they uh, survive. Um, the more you feel the nature, the better your, your art comes out. In, in, in this case, of my style of Giltaka, it's all nature-based. It's really nature teaches us everything. And you just have to observe and absorb enough uh, from the nature components and and everything you you require to to express right now I'm doing the eye uh, eye is really important because eye is the window to life in any living things. It's the window to the spirit within. Uh, kind of like, you know, rush through the eye and then if you don't capture the spirit, then your, your subject, your fish will be dead. Um, if you do the eyes right, then it starts swimming and then it starts looking for something to uh, feed on almost. This mahi mahi has, has his uh, mouth open. Um, and then he looks very aggressive. He's, he's hungry enough to go look for another flying fish or something. Came out pretty cool. Here it is. Here's Abigail's uh, big mahi mahi that she caught. Uh, it was a lucky catch of her uh, outing there. It's almost 40 pounds, and the uh, bull has this big head, and uh, it's just so aggressive. So by capturing the eye, uh, to give that predator kind of eye would really uh, make Mahi Mahi come to life. And of course this uh, fluorescent color, like in between colors, uh, really the key and the spot and stuff. So it's a nice Mahi Mahi. Alright, see what you get to print next time. Aloha!